Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to Canuary 2024. I am so excited about this year. It is going to be awesome and it starts with Canuary. Like that's the best. But what I wanted to do is I've got a short little intro video that I'm doing here for my videos because I want to make sure that all my information is correct and I don't miss anything or leave anything out that's really important. So I've got my notes. So first of all, I want to say thank you to Lisa over at Sutton's Days for asking me to participate again this year. This is one of my favorite collaborations. I think it sets a great way to start the year. And I do love it because I feel like there's a lot of New Year's resolutions and things going on. And I also think that Canuary is a great jumping off point for people who want to learn to can. So I think it's awesome. So I'm excited about participating in it. Now this is a collaboration that was created by Lisa over at Sutton's Days uh, a while ago and we've been doing it and it's just so much fun. So in the description is going to of this video look down there there is going to be all of the names and the dates and the links to the channels of the the uh the creators that are participating <clears throat> now what you need to do is be sure you go over to their videos and when you watch their videos you need to make sure that you make a comment so and not just an emoji or the word hi uh you know that kind of thing a real conversational comment uh, because those comments are going to be gathered up and at the end of January on the 31st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Lisa is going to do a drawing now the drawing is super cool because Lisa has talked to four jars you know the, the awesome company that makes amazing four jars lids we really appreciate the fact that they came out with lids when lids were so hard to get anyway so there's gonna be um, Four Jars is providing some of the grand finale prizes as well as Lisa. So let me just tell you, Four Jars is, has also come out with an awesome pressure canner. So they are going to be donating one of those pressure canners to give out two. And then there's going to be another drawing for 200 lids. And then there's going to be another drawing for, they've got the cutest little timer. It looks like, it's so cute. Anyway, a timer and towels. So there's those prizes from Four Jars. But then Lisa is also going to be giving away one of those amazing canners as well as a steam canner. So you want to be in there for all of those drawings. So you want to make sure you watch all the videos and make sure you leave a good comment, okay? That way on the 31st, you can just sit back and listen to the drum roll and maybe you'll be a winner. So that's super cool. And then the other important thing I want to say is that Canuary is very, very popular. There are a lot of creators out there who will tag on to the word and the name Canuary. It's not like licensed or anything, but they will be creating their own thing. But if it's not got in the thumbnail of each video will be a little green box and it's got a little picture and it says Canuary, that thumbnail needs to be, that little thing, uh, needs to be on the thumbnails of the videos for the participants that are in this Canuary. So if you think going and watching anything that has Canuary and um, putting comments is going to help you with the grand finale prize, if, unless it has the little green logo in the thumbnail, it is not part of this Canuary where these prizes will be given out. Now, I... Um, I'm excited about this and I've got three videos coming up and in what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little video at the beginning of each of those videos so that you get the right information in case you had to go back and look. And as always, let's get started. So for this Canuary video, I am going to be using again my all new book, ball book of canning and preserving. This is one of my favorites because it has some like interesting recipes that you don't find a lot of other places and it tends to make smaller amounts. And you know, with just me and Brian now, we don't need to be canning up like 21 batch, you know, jars of anything. And these, this recipe is going to make five uh, half pint jars, which is perfect. And the recipe is on page 178. It's the habanero, mango habanero wing and dipping sauce. And the reason I thought I wanted to make that was because there's a recipe right down there for the mango habanero chicken wings that sound delicious. So I need to have this if I want to make those. Okay, so what you have here, I've got my food processor. You can use a blender also. Uh, let me scoot it up so you can see it a little bit better because we're going to be processing some stuff okay so the first thing you need is a cup of white vinegar and then a quarter of a cup of hot sauce and i just have classical regular hot sauce and a two tablespoons of sugar i have right there and two tablespoons of honey 
five habanero peppers cut in half and seeded, and four garlic cloves crushed, and four cups of chopped, either peeled and fresh mango or frozen. I got frozen because there was no real nice mangoes in the uh, store for me. So this is easy. What you do is you process the first six ingredients in a blender or processor until the peppers are minced. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all these ingredients. I'm going to start out with the vinegar. And then we're going to put in the peppers. And then I will put in the hot sauce. I'm going to get my little ladle out so that I can mix that up. There we go. That's good. The garlic. Scooch that in there. And then the honey. And I kind of warmed this up so that it would come out a little bit better. I use my finger to scooch that out. That's going to give it an extra little good flavor. There we go. And then the sugar. Okay, so there's all of the things. Now I'm going to put the top on, and I'm just going to process these lightly until the, the peppers are chopped. So I'm going to fold it. Oops. Hang on a second. I got to get that tight. Okay, now there we go. I'm just going to. Looking good. Okay. There we go. Do that in a blender too if you want to, but you can see how the peppers are all chopped up. One little quick pulse. There we go. And now I'm going to start putting in the mangoes. Let me get my little spoon in here. There we go. Okay. And then after we do this, this is all going to go in a pot and we're going to bring it to a boil. Well, let me get this all done first. So then it says now, uh, it says, now gradually add the mango and process until everything's smooth. So I'm gonna put about half of it in there and then Oops, there must be a, I don't have that locked on there well enough. Okay, I'm going to add the rest. Get this in here. Might have better done it in my blender, but that's okay. Maybe I will put this in the blender just because I think it's going to be a little bit better for it. So I'll come back. I'm going to put this in the blender because I think this is too much liquid for this food processor. Okay, I've got all my stuff in a blender. I don't know why I use that food processor for liquid. I didn't realize there would be so much liquid in that. Um, I've never really used it for liquid, but I'm going to use this now. So we're just going to kind of get a saw. There we go. That looks pretty good. Make a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. So now what it tells me to do is pour the mixture into a four quart stainless steel. Oops, hang on, stop. I hit the crush ice. There we go. I'm looking at my book. Okay, now we're going to pour this in here. And let me get my spatula. Okay, here we are. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like when one thing kind of goes weird to begin with, then everything goes weird. But we're, we're back on track now. So I've got all this in this pot. And now what it tells me to do is to put this on, uh, bring it to a boil, and then reduce the heat and let it simmer uncovered for about 10 minutes until it's kind of thick. Then we're just going to put it in the jars to a quarter of an inch head space. Remove the air bubbles, wipe the rim, put the lid on, apply the band, and then these are going to water process in the uh, boiling water canner, or you could use a steam canner. I'm just not using my steam canner because I'm doing several things and I need the whole top of my stove. So I will be using my Ball Fresh Tech uh, electric boiling water canner, which is awesome. But anyway, I'm also going to process this for 10 minutes. Because this process is in the boiling water canner for 10 minutes or more, anything that processes 10 minutes or more, you don't have to pre-sterilize the jars. So that makes it nice. So I'm going to pop this on the stove and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Then I'm going to reduce the heat and let it simmer for 10 minutes. And I'll be back when we're ready to fill the jars. Okay, we are done with this is ready. And I'm so excited about this mango habanero sauce. This is going to be so good. It's already, I tasted it. It's delicious. So, now what's going to happen is I am going to put it in the jars, a quarter of an inch head space. And so, 
I'm going to take my little headspace gauge and I'm just going to check it out. You can see that it's got quarter, half, three quarters, and one inch. So I'm going to do the quarter. And so I know once I look at it once, then I always know where it's going to go. I don't have to measure every single jar. So this is going to be so good on chicken wings. I just know it. And it's a nice consistency, like it's a nice saucy consistency. So a little bit more. That looks perfect. Now, be sure and wipe the rim of your jar because if there's any food on there that'll get between the lid and the jar, it will not seal properly. So now I'm also going to debubble it a little bit. There we go. Should use a skewer for that, but that's okay. And now I'm going to take one of these awesome four jars lids. Thank you, four jars, for sponsoring Canuary because it's just awesome lids that they have. Okay, now I'm going to put the ring on there. Fingertip tight. Neat. If you have not done fingertip tight, what it means is like you're going to turn this until you feel resistance. And like normally you'd go just that little bit more to crank it down, but then you're going to come back just a bit. So it just kind of has a little ease move on there, but it's not completely tight. The reason you have to do that, two things. You pay attention to the headspace because these recipes have been calculated for the amount of expansion they have. That expansion will push the air out so that when it recedes, as it cools, it will suck the air down. Important part of that is, you hear me say it pushes the air out. That means it creates an anaerobic environment because when the lid sucks down, there's no air in there. But that's also why you have to have it fingertip tight. It can't be completely tight on the jar or the force of the air out will buckle the lid. So it needs to have enough room for the air to come out, but then uh, to be able to seal on there without opening in the canner. So that's what fingertip tight's about. So now I'm going to go ahead and jar up the rest of these and put them in the canner. I will bring the canner to a boil. I'll have the water at least an inch or two above the jar. Bring the canner to a boil for 10 minutes. Once it comes to a boil, I'll put the timer on for 10 minutes and then we'll open it and let it sit there for a few minutes and then we'll take them out. So I'm going to jar the rest of these up now. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something here. So this is in my uh, Ball Fresh Tech electric boil water canner and what I wanted to show you here is that I have several batches of things in here I made three different uh, recipes and so they're all in here together and I wanted to point out so if you don't want your jars to bounce in the boiling water and fall over and stuff so I've used a squatty pint which is a nice wide base I could have put a quart jar in there or something but it's about the same height as the regular canning of uh, the jelly sized jar and so I've got that in there to kind of hold things in their place better and also I wanted to point out yes I do have different recipes in here but they are like recipes they're all savory or spicy like they're all like a salsa or the the hot mango or the apple uh, chili or the uh, herb tomato jam so they're all similar and that's okay I certainly wouldn't put the tomato herb jam in there with like a strawberry or a lemon curd or something like that so you want to make sure that if you're going to combine recipes in your processing that you want to make sure they're similar recipes okay so those are all going to process and as soon as they're done we'll come back and take a look okay guys I took it out of the canner and of course I used my uh, my lifter, my jar lifter, and you lift it straight up and you bring it over and set it down straight down. You don't want to tip your jar because if you do, you could get food around the rim and it would keep the top from sealing. But I want you to see that mango. Oh my gosh, that mango. It's just such a pretty color. That is going to be so good and I can't wait to use it with chicken wings. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.